If you're like me, when you think of Cobra, the first thing that pops in your mind, other than a snake, is a radar detector. They make some pretty good radar detectors, but it looks like they're trying to get into the dash cam market, and they're coming at it pretty hard. We got the SC201 Dual View Smart Dash Cam with real-time driver alerts that records in full HD 1080p. Being that this is a dual view dash cam, it records not only in the front of your car, but also inside of your car. So this is perfect for ride sharing services like Uber and Lyft. It does feature an infrared cabin night vision camera so you can see everything no matter how dark it is inside of the car. A two inch LCD display that as you can see will let you see in front and inside of the car at the same time. As well as a Drive Smarter app so you can access all the video files on your phone and download them if you need them. One of the cool things about Cobra dash cams that I've noticed is they always come with a 16 gigabyte micro SD card already ready to go. Which is very nice to see because a lot of cameras don't come with a micro SD card although I would recommend getting a much bigger one at least 128 gigabytes so you can save more data. Although remember it will loop record and overwrite old files so if you don't want to save a bunch of files that's not really an issue although being that it's constantly writing to the memory card the sectors get overwritten so much the card's more likely to fail when it's smaller because it's overwriting the same sectors over and over and over again. But you know for the most part you'll be fine. It does have built-in Bluetooth, dual band Wi-Fi, and GPS so it has all the technologies that you can need in a dash cam. Of course if you want to use this as a 24-7 parking monitor for your car you can actually hardwire this so it always has constant power and it's non-stop recording forever. Now the packaging, looking good. Cobra did a good job with this. I'm really liking it. it gets the point across very well. All right, nice box within the sleeve. Oh, it folds up. All right. Cobra, drive smarter, peace of mind in the driver's seat. Download the Drive Smarter app and take control of your experience on and off the road. Very cool. Oh, you can actually monitor your vehicle remotely for unexpected events. Although, of course, to do that, you need to have your camera connected to a Wi-Fi network. So if you have a Wi-Fi hotspot in your car, pretty cool. Inside the box, I have a small micro USB cable, I'm guessing for data transfer. We have a micro USB 12 volt power cable for actual power, along with a USB port so you can actually charge your phone or other devices at the same time. And you know what? I feel like this is the first dash cam I've seen that has a micro USB power port. It usually has a mini USB and I was like, what? Now, let's just try to get Type-C next. We have an adhesive mount so you can mount this to your windshield along with an extra adhesive in case you need to remove it and move it to another car. As well as a quick start guide, a reminder to activate your warranty, contact them for support, and important product information. And then of course we have the actual dash cam here. I'm pretty excited. Let's see how this thing looks. Woohoo! All right, this thing is a little bit bigger than I was expecting, although it makes sense with all the technology that's built into it. Over here on the front, we have the two inch display that'll show you two video feeds at once. And there it is, looking good. Got a nice little Cobra down here on the corner. But take a look at those bezels, reminded me of HTC days back in like 2010. But it's a dash cam, so it's not really a big deal. Over here on the right side, we have four infrared lights for night vision, along with the interior facing cabin camera that can actually be rotated exactly to the angle that you need depending on how you mount it. Make sure you remove this film to get the best video quality. Over here on the sides, I thought these were buttons, but I guess it's just design. Kind of reminds me of some speakers. Down here on the bottom, we have the power button along with three other buttons that'll be able to control what's on the screen, along with the microphone hole. Up here on the top, we have the micro USB port, the micro SD card slot, which is already pre-installed with the 16 gigabyte micro SD card, which is actually a Western Digital Industrial card, which is great to see they didn't skimp out on this, with the mounting bracket on the top. Now over here on the front, we have the Cobra logo along with the front face camera don't forget to remove that film along with the GPS insignia and speaker grill now I think it's pretty self-explanatory on how to mount this you take the mount you mount this up you put it on here you slide it on there and it's locked into place very simple if you can't figure that out I don't know but of course you can loosen this up so you can angle it exactly how you need it depending on where you have it mounted in your car so now let's get this thing some power get it powered on LED light is on and now we're in the setup mode so we can set this thing up. We'll get the time zone. As you can see, the buttons do correlate to what's on the screen, so that's really nice to see. We do not have a touch screen. Those beeps are very loud, so I'm actually impressed with the speaker quality. It wants us to format the SD card immediately, or maybe not. I see it counting, so why is it beeping at me? Format, do something. Let's go to the settings. We have video resolution. We can go all the way up to 1080p at 30 frames a second for both cameras, 1080p and 720p, 720p and 720p, 720p 60 and 720p 30. I personally like to have more resolution. It doesn't have to be super smooth, but I would prefer 1080p at 60 if that was a possibility. 
We have loop clip time. We have one, two, and three minutes. Personally, I'm just gonna leave it at one because I know transferring video files through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is sometimes really slow, so the smaller the better. We have Wi-Fi, so this is where you can connect to your Wi-Fi hotspot so you can always have access to this no matter where you are. So you're gonna put in your Wi-Fi name and password, turn it on and off, do what you need to do, but if you don't have one, I guess you don't have to worry about it. Although, of course, when you're at home, if it connects to the Wi-Fi in your house, you can do that instead. Although you'll only be able to look at the camera while you're at home, which is better than nothing. Next, we have GPS on and off. I usually like to have that on, I mean, why not? Bluetooth on and off, leave that on so that way we can connect to the app easily. Display, we can have picture in picture front full screen or cabin full screen, depending on which one you wanna see bigger and which one you want in the corner, or you can just have the front or inside camera only. It's up to you. I like to have the front camera full screen and the inside a little bit smaller. We have the date and time, so you can automatically set that when you connect to your app and all that good stuff. Daylight savings on and off. We don't have daylight savings here, so I'll just turn that off. We have microphone on and off, depending on your jurisdiction. Motion detection in case you want to use it while your car is parked. In case somebody walks by or gets in your car, you can turn that on and off. Parking mode on and off if you have it hardwired to always be powered. Surveillance auto shut off. You can have it turn off after three hours or whatever you want. I'll just leave it at three hours for now, although if you're using parking mode, I guess you'll want to leave it on all the time. G-Sensor Sensitivity Level 1, 2, or 3. I usually put it in the middle and then change it based on how it reacts to the roads. We have watermarks. So we can have the date and time watermarked. Yes. Speed. Yes. GPS coordinates. Sure. Driver ID. Sure. And then a logo. Sure, let's have the Cobra logo, why not? Then we have the driver ID watermark, so you can actually put your license plate here, your car, your name, whatever you want, it's up to you. We have exposure values in case you wanna adjust the video quality. Button beep, which is kind of annoying, although you know you're pressing it, so I kinda like to have that on for the most part. Screen savers, so you can have the screen automatically turn off after one or three minutes or always be on. We have interior night vision. I like to have that on auto so it automatically engages once it's dark enough. Language, you can choose between all these different languages. I'll just leave it on English, of course. Driver assistance, so we can have forward collision warning, on. Lane departure warning, on. We have speed alert, so you can have it automatically alert you if you go over a certain speed based on your GPS. I'll just leave that off so it's not annoying me all the time. Calibration, so you can calibrate it so all these things work as intended. We'll just leave that alone for now. And then we have iRadar network alerts. You can have an announced display and also over speed limit alerts. So that, that's actually pretty cool. I'm guessing when you connect to the app, it'll link with iRadar, and if people's radar detectors pick up a radar signal and it syncs it up to iRadar, it'll alert you through this camera. So this effectively somewhat becomes a radar detector without actually being a radar detector. That's actually pretty cool if that's what it does. Personally, I already have a radar detector from Escort, so I won't be needing this, but that's really cool if you don't have one. We have Drive Smarter Services, auto backup videos. Oh, so you can have it, whoa, you can have it back up to the cloud, I guess? So emergency videos, let's turn that on. And then we have incident reporting, as well as Mayday alerts. Okay, that's actually really cool. This is a pretty smart camera, actually. We have speed units, you can have miles per hour or kilometers per hour. We have volume, so you can adjust the volume. I like to have it at 100% so I can hear it over the music. We have wide dynamic range, leave that on. GPS format, decimal or degrees. Um, I'll just leave that for now. Frequency, 60 hertz because we're in the United States. Format reminder, delete videos reminder, sure, in case it's getting full. Format SD card and about. So we'll format the SD card like it said we should. We're done, now we can go back and start recording and remember it will automatically start recording once your car turns on if you have it set up like that and as you can see right now the microphone is muted but we can easily unmute that at the touch of a button so maybe somebody doesn't want to be recorded you could turn it on just like that touch of a button very simple you can press this button right here to take a screenshot that's really cool it'll take both the front and the rear and then on the right side we have the stop button if you want to stop recording but maybe you're recording you see something crazy like a UFO flies by, you're like, oh my god, I can't believe I just saw that, I wish I recorded it. <gasps> I did record it, but what if it overwrites it because my memory is getting full? You just press the power button right here, and now this video will be locked on the memory card so it won't be overwritten no matter what, so that way you'll have access to it later on. Now up here on the top is pretty cool, you can see that we're saving this video, if you change your mind you can turn that off easily. Stop emergency recording. We can see the timer, we can see full HD video quality. We can see loop recording at one minute. We can see the microphone is muted. Oh, okay, so when it when it's muted down here, it's actually recording audio. When it's muted up here, it's not. I see, it's a little bit backwards. We're connected to Wi-Fi. We have GPS as well as Bluetooth. 
I'm looking right at the camera so you can see me right here on the interior view. That's actually really cool. It looks very good. And I almost forgot, down here on the bottom we have the date and timestamp that's going to be on the video. And I'm... I... I don't know how it got the date and time right because I didn't connect it to Wi-Fi or an app or anything, but it did. Maybe it's using GPS, but how would it get the date? I don't know. Kind of spooky, huh? All in all, though, this is looking like a very good camera with a lot of features I wasn't expecting, and they're very nice to see. So now I'm going to actually download the app so we can take a look and see what features the app has. We have the Drive Smarter app. We'll get that downloaded real quick. And then we'll also get the Cobra Eye Radar app to see how that works. And from what I can tell, you do get community-based alerts, verified alerts from the Defender base, integrates with compatible Cobra products, as well as great driving features like live traffic, car finder, get directions, day-night mode, and customizable vehicle icons. There are also premium features that go either $5 a month or $50 a year, although you do get one year premium included for free with the purchase of a compatible Cobra product. Now I'm assuming they're talking about radar detectors. Once we have the app downloaded and we're logged in, you can power on your dash cam, done, continue, searching for dash cam will allow it to connect with Bluetooth, it might take a minute, it did find an SC201, perfect, we'll continue, it just dinged, I guess it found it and connected. And we're ready to go. New vehicle, select to set up, connect camera. So now we'll add a vehicle image, add a nickname, year, make, model, color. We don't need to do all that. I guess we do have to do this. So we'll do, so we'll do Tesla 2020. Oh, I guess we don't have to do all that. Okay. Confirm. Ready to go. We have Tesla. Select to set up. Okay. Camera one. You can also set up additional cameras if you want. Finish setup. We can allow it to see our location. Let's do that. Allow while using app. Firmware update. Great. Let's download it. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. And it looks like it's going to take too long. Can we cancel? Okay, it looks like once we start, we can't stop. So, I guess we'll just wait. Okay, it's actually picking up speed pretty quick now. Okay, join the network of the camera. Yeah, sure, you can connect to the local network. Keep your device powered on while it's uploading the update. New firmware uploaded successful, ready for the camera. So now the camera's updating. All right, after about two minutes, the camera is powering back on and it looks like the update was successful. It's recording automatically, everything's working. So now we have to connect back to the dash cam. It sounds like we got in. And now we can do a live view and we should be able to see, we can see exactly where the car is. Let me just zoom out. We can see exactly where the car is, which is just right here, and then also a live view of nothing. I don't see anything. Why isn't it showing anything? Oh, there's even an intercom? Restart camera malfunctioning? <laughs> okay, let's try this again. So, camera's restarted. It knows exactly where we are. Now, will you just show me the live view, please? I'm kind of getting annoyed here. Okay, um, every time I go to the gallery, it says to restart the camera. Do I have to restart the app? Like. Okay, let's try to restart the app. There we go. Okay, I guess I had to restart the app. I don't know. It's a little bit confusing. But we're here. We can see exactly where it is. We can see a live view of the camera. Look at this. You can see me. Hey, how you doing? Wait, we're upside down. There we go. It actually could tell exactly which way the camera's facing. It's pretty cool. But there I am. Okay, looking good. Looking good. Okay, hold on. Can I make this full screen or something? But as you can see, it's looking very good. Hey. So it actually is working very well now that we got it all set up. We can go back home, there's nothing to see here. But we can go to the gallery. Mm-hmm, we can go to the gallery. Watch this little circle spin. Okay, it wants to join the network again. I thought we already connected, I don't know what's going on. The live view still works, right? This app's kind of driving me nuts. Okay, we're, we got the live view. We're live, okay, now go to the gallery. I guess it might take a couple seconds. I feel like the gallery is one of the main things you're going to be using this app for, and it's not opening. Yeah, I mean, the only time I really would ever use this app is if I want to download a video off the camera to my phone, and it looks like it's impossible. I don't know, we'll come back to this. So we have alerts, and it takes us into the iRadar app, and it keeps disconnecting us from the camera's Wi-Fi. I don't know what's going on. So we can accept this, we have to log in. It'll help you plan your route based on speed limits, live traffic, get you the Defender database, all that stuff. Basically the same stuff you get on a radar detector link right here if you wanna check that out. But let's just go back to the 
app, some drive smarter. So right here we have the settings for the camera, GPS on, Wi-Fi on, Bluetooth on, date and time. Basically the same settings you have on the camera, but it's a lot easier to just do in the app, assuming it connects well. Um, let's see, I mean, for the most part, I mean, everything looks exactly the same, but I'd rather use the app, of course. And really that's all you can do in the app. So the main thing I wanna do in the app is the gallery and it's not working. Camera connection error, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, this is, Okay, we keep getting disconnected from the Wi-Fi network of the camera. Unable to join? <laughs> this is a hassle and a ha Stop, I don't want, connect to the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Why does it keep disconnecting from the Wi-Fi? Well, I don't know, the app apparently is very buggy. So I'm gonna just stop now before I start ripping out the rest of my hair. So we're gonna go get this thing set up in the car get some sample footage, test it out, see how it looks, and let's see if it's any good. I didn't expect it to do this, but it's actually mapping out the lane as we drive, so it's definitely gonna make your driving safer if you don't already have these features in your car. While we're stopped here, we might as well do a microphone test. Are you guys able to see that license plate? Because a lot of people need to see the license plate. But if you can't, which a lot of dash cams can't because they have trouble for some reason, what you can do is stream the license plate out because we have the microphone on. So, you know, there's a way around it. But still, it'd be better if you could see it. <laughs> All right, so now we are back in the studio. We just took the camera out for a little spin, got a test footage day and night. You guys can tell me what you guys thought of it, but personally, I thought it looked pretty good. I mean, it's 1080p, full HD. The quality of the inside camera, that's what's really got me. I mean, even at night, it was crystal clear, looked very good, got the whole cabin. So if you're doing Uber or Lyft, this is definitely a good option right here. Plus, I love all the features that you have. You connect it to the app, get all the radar signals and all that good stuff. Radar signals, radar alerts, whatever, traffic, Stuff like that, along with the safety features that make your car safer. Personally, I don't need any of those because the test already has all that stuff. But if you don't have that, this is definitely a good way to get them because you get the camera and all the safety features, interior recording, parking monitor, all that good stuff all in one device and it's really good if you want to pick one up links down below let me know if you guys are going to pick one up or if you guys choose another dash cam now the one thing i'm hating about this camera is how buggy the app is i mean i'm trying to get to the gallery to download the video because that's the main thing i would ever be using the app for i mean all you can really do in that app is look at a live view which i don't understand because i can already see what's going on in front of me although unless you're doing it remotely through wi-fi then that's a whole other story but that was working so that's a good that's thumbs up right there but going to the gallery to get the footage that's already recorded that you might need to show a cop or something guess what you're not gonna be able to see it that's just driving me nuts but other than that it's a good camera it's got all the features you can want i just hope they update the app and that's the good thing about apps they can be updated so fingers crossed they update it and bring it up to par with other dash cam apps